Hey, what's going on, my fellow reefers, Fragbox TV, and today I want to talk to you about one of the coolest symbiotic relationships um, that we keep in our saltwater reef tanks. Okay, so here it is. This is the very highly coveted pistol shrimp. Where are you, buddy? I'm gonna do my best to focus and go be pear. They're a little bit stressed out right now. Usually they would be um, in a cave or burrowing in sand. This is a holy matrimony, these fish. We have a bunch in stock right now. It's really one of the coolest symbiotic relationships in the ocean. And they are relatively easy fish to keep. So they're okay in aquariums as small as uh, 15 gallons if you get small ones. And they will live happily in most types of substrate, but you don't want to keep them in gravel. You need something that they can burrow into, and you don't want to keep them if your tank is bare bottom. So make sure as well that your rock is very stable. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to focus here. And so that they're not going to have rocks squish them once they start to burrow into the rock, because they will create these artificial burrows in your sand. Um, best to add them at the same time if you can and all the ones we have here in the store are already paired up So we have a variety of species. Let me just try and focus here On the different ones that we have they are not the uh, very picky eaters So they'll accept just about all foods pellets flakes frozen foods and they're really fascinating the reason why they live to get uh, together and pair up so the pistol shrimp it gets its name I'll start with them the pistol shrimp gets its name from this enlarged claw that it has on one side and it makes this crazy snapping sound. It's moving water basically at lightning speed. It's so fast that it's creating this bubble underwater that collapses back onto itself. So the sound that they make, it's so loud. It's uh, recorded up to 210 decibels. So just for reference, a rifle is around 150 decibels. So underwater, it sounds like stupid anemone shrimp. Get out of the way. You're not the star of the show today. It sounds like a gun. That's where they get their name, pistol shrimp, and you can literally hear it outside of the water. It's like a snapping sound. So these pistol shrimps, there's 1,100 different known species right now, but of the gobies, there's only a handful that will actually create this symbiotic relationship. Usually with one, sometimes two shrimps, um, there's 160 gobies that will pair with shrimp, but only a handful are going to actually pair with the pistol shrimp. So watchman goby, striped sand goby, diamond watchman, pink spotted, wheeler, hyphen gobies. We have a bunch of different ones um, here paired up right now. I think we have five different types of pairings here in the store. So why do they even bother pairing up? So I'll start with the fish. Um, the benefits for the fish for pairing up. So the shrimp burrows and builds a home for the fish where it can live. So obvious benefit, it's got a house. And it also gives it a place to nest and spawn eggs, so it's kind of like a, a hospital. And they're also protecting each other. So studies show that when they have not paired up, they actually don't live very long. So also when the shrimp burrows, it's going to uncover worms and different food for the fish. So the shrimp is actually feeding the fish and it will take a mouthful of newly turned sand and sift it in order to find food. And it's in the best interest for the fish for the shrimp to eat. And I'm going to explain why. It's kind of gross. Let me get to it. But the fish also gets cleaned by the shrimp. So they pick off um, parasites. They clean their body, their fins, their tail. They actually groom them. So it gets a free house and it gets fed and it gets groomed. So the fish has got a pretty sweet deal living with the shrimp. So why does the shrimp bother living with the fish? So the shrimp has very, very weak vision, very poor vision and the fish basically acts as its eyes. It warns the shrimp about incoming danger and the goby is essentially the shrimp's guard. So they're thought to communicate through their antenna and they rarely leave each other's side. And the goby will also provide food for the shrimp. So it's kind of gross how it does it, but most burrow dwelling shrimp, sorry to be crude, but they shit uh, outside of their home. And that's not the case with these two. The shrimp will actually take a dump inside the burrow. So the shrimp eats the fecal matter of the fish and it blows its poop inside the home all day for the shrimp to eat. On some occasions, the shrimp will literally eat it right out of its butt and that's why I said earlier it's in the best interest of the shrimp to keep that fish well fed because then it means that it's gonna be well fed. So kind of, kind of gross, but they, they live together in that way. So how do they meet? Um, some of them are very, very picky about their partners. So wheeler shrimp goby is only found with yellow um, pistol shrimps 
Dracula shrimp gobies will almost always be found with Randall pistol shrimp. Some are not as finicky though, and they begin looking for each other at a very, very young age in order to survive. So without each other, they will not live long, and they use these chemical cues in order to pair up. So a gobyless shrimp will close off its home. It's gonna have this little opening of its burrow just for enough for a fish to stick its tail in, and then the shrimp will decide if it likes the fish based on uh, its tail, if they're gonna create a partnership. So it's pretty cool, it's very unique. Uh, it's that a fish and a crustacean can actually communicate through the antenna and through their tails and so different tail movements mean different things to the shrimp that's how they communicate and how he warns them so different movements of the tail it has uh, flicks it has uh, tail uh, beats and very fast movements basically all of it is designed to warn the shrimp of impeding danger because it can't see anything. In terms of reproducing, the fish are called gonocharistic, so they don't change sex. Most fish are territorial and the males are more aggressive, so they're going to um, protect their burrow at all costs. So male and female fish will temporarily pair up to mate and the males perform this cool dance, they flash their fins at the females to attract them and the shrimps are not included in this uh, sexy time dance, they just gotta watch. But if she agrees then magic happens inside the burrow and they can produce up to 20,000 eggs every single time. The shrimps are actually, or usually monogamous because it's very tricky for a shrimp to find a new mate. So there's no good dating apps right now for the shrimps even with modern technology, if they do look for a mate, they just burrow underground, they look um, by creating tunnels, and they're trying to find shrimp basically uh, adjacent or close by to them because it's very tricky for them to actually leave out into open waters. They're gonna get eaten very quickly. Just about everything wants to eat this poor fish and shrimp, so they absolutely need each other to survive uh, natural predation. So I think that's it today on the pistol shrimp and goby pair. Here's a nice yellow watchman in Tia's Evo and he's waiting for us to add a pistol shrimp. I think we're actually going to add one today so that he can have a friend and he's got this perfect sort of cave and place here to burrow and hang out with him. But if you guys got any questions about that symbiotic relationship or anything related to reef tanks, I'll leave our contact info at the end of the video like I always do. Hit us up. You know, we love talking about this stuff. Thank you very much for watching and this has been Fragbox TV.